taking Carrie's light body into the void, just asking her guides where they would like to begin today. We're going to begin at the crown chakra. So opening the divine blueprint of Carrie's crown chakra. I saw this beautiful golden crown like flying through the air. <laughs> it's so vibrant. They said it's your royal crown. They said that this is a fun way to start off the session. <laughs> So before I even started this session this morning, I felt so many lion beings around me. Um, and I just had a feeling that you were very, very connected to the Lyrans. And I think that you have felt that yourself. And they're saying that um, in Lyra, you were actually Lyran royalty. So they were very big on royalty in Lyra and in Vega and you were a part of Lyra and royalty and so they're saying that your crown chakra like really is your crown <laughs> and the Lyran you're also a part of the Lyran council for the Galactic Federation your transmitter for them and we can talk about what that actually means more after the session I'm seeing what else they want you to know. Okay, so they said that there are lifetimes that, that need to be healed from Lyra and from Vega um, that are sitting in your lower energy centers. So we will discuss those once we get there. Um, they really just want you to know that your crown is your connection to your Lyran family. So they really want to communicate with you more and the way that you do this is through your crown chakra so we can talk about more how to communicate with them but you definitely have the ability to be a clear audit so actually in direct communication with them and then you're very clear cognizant like i see you good at like mathematics and science and a lot of that is just like a clear knowing. It's like you just know the answer before <laughs> you even try to solve equations and things like that. It's really cool. It's like I'm seeing a lot of like mathematics and sacred geometry in your blueprint, which is so beautiful. And it's just all this like clear cognizant ability <clears throat> from your crown chakra. It just, it feels like you just get these floods of information when your crown chakra is in balance like i'm seeing like after you did my sophia activation it's like the floodgates were just open and you would just be downloaded all of this information and they're saying that they love that they're like keep the floodgates open <laughs> they love sending you as much information as possible and you're also a transmission for the high council so that basically just means that you are here um and you have contracts with them to send information back to that collective so that you can help the ascension at this time and then you can also help the the ascension of the lyran collective as well because they are rebuilding lyra and vega um in the galactic realm so it's like they're using all this information to help rebuild their collective. Okay, so I'm asking them if there's anything that needs to be upgraded from your crown chakra. They're just shining blue light into it and golden light. It's really cool. Your crown chakra is more of like a golden color. <laughs> they said it's that lyrid energy. <laughs> Okay, let me see if there's anything they need me to upgrade. Your crown chakra actually looks really good. I am just going to do one slight upgrade. 
just to really get it flowing. A tuka do. That's a lot better. <laughs> Your Zion family is amazing. They're just so warm and loving, but powerful. I love it so much. I feel Sekhmet here is also. Okay, let's go down into the third eye. Let's open the master coating of the third eye. <laughs> It's so funny because before I even open the master coating, it's like they're just sending me so many images. They're so excited that you're here today doing this. You're extremely clairvoyant. Like, they're saying that out of all of your clairs, your ability to be clairvoyant is your superpower. So, Lyrans are very psychic. Um, they are known to have, like psychic visions um <laughs> they're kind of showing me like that's so raven <laughs> that was on disney channel like lion beings are known for being able to see events in the future and they're saying that this is an ability that you have um it's just really building your clairvoyance so we're going to completely activate your clairvoyance today I do feel it's still just like a tiny shield over it. So I don't know if something ever happened where there was some kind of fear. But they're saying just really, really start protecting your energy and just welcoming these things in love. But you're doing such a great job. Your third eye feels really good. I'm just going to activate this ability for you completely. Adia, 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 adia. And then they're just shining purple light into it. Just clearing the rest of this. Ooh, it's so cool. All of it. It's like um, your chakras. So it's like I'm seeing it's like blue, purple, indigo-ish, um, green. But it's so cool because they all have this like beautiful golden light behind all of them. It's like you just naturally radiate like this golden light color. It's so beautiful. <laughs> they just said that that's the color of the Lyrans. Okay, so let's see. So let's see if there's anything else that you need to know about your third eye. You also have the ability to communicate with plants so you could actually go and like speak to the plants and they want to speak back to you like i'm seeing you like outside just to, next to like a daisy <laughs> or like a rose bush and you could just speak to it and they'll speak back to you it's just like really discerning what thoughts are yours and what thoughts are actually coming from a different being. So this is where like just more meditation, just really learning how your vibration feels versus other vibrations coming in. This is super important. I don't know why if this has been like an issue for you lately, but they're just uh, saying be aware of psychic attacks. Like I know that those have been ramped up recently and they're saying that a lot of the times, if you have a negative thought, it's not even yours. Like, it's coming in from somewhere else. So, just be aware of every thought that comes through your head. And most of the time, if it's a negative thought, it's not even you. And the, protecting your energy will help keep these outside thoughts away as well. It's really cool. They're putting almost like a... It's almost like this like golden not cage but 
they're putting like a golden barrier around your upper chakras to protect you from this it's really cool they're so protective over you <laughs> i love it i love the lyran so much i'm seeing if there's anything else that needs to be done here they said just to keep practicing your spiritual abilities you absolutely have the ability to remote view and you could actually remote view all of your lifetimes in Lyra and Vega. And you could remote view your lifetimes as Lyra and royalty. So that you can see it for yourself. I'm also seeing you in the Egyptian realm as a lion being. I heard a sister of Ra. So that's probably your connection to the high priestesses. Okay, let's go down to your throat chakra. Okay, so when I tap into the throat chakra, um, there are a couple past lives here still. Um, there's a lot of like, they're showing me like untapped potential. So your throat chakra is very powerful as well. <laughs> they're saying it's like your roar. <laughs> like sometimes you just need to connect your uh, solar plexus to your throat chakra and just roar and scream and it will make you feel so powerful and it will really help you get some of those emotions or that stored density out of your body. So they're just shining, they're shining ultraviolet light into it, just transmuting the stuck energy. So we're going to energetically connect together your solar plexus and your throat chakra. Um, after I do this, just be very intentional in the way that you speak. They're showing me that you do a pretty good job when you're speaking, but just uh, this is really going to put like that power and like that energy behind the words that you're speaking. So just be aware of the power of your words. It's really cool. They asked me to add in the heart chakra as well, like really weave these chakras together because then it's also going to put like the power of love behind your words when you speak. Ooh, that feels a lot better. Okay, let me see what past lives you're holding on to in your throat. I saw a past life as a witch, but it was a... Uh, you were like a very peaceful witch <laughs> in the woods. You just really enjoyed like being by yourself out in the woods. You had all these friends that were fairies. And they're showing you, or they're showing me, you're, like, speaking to the wildlife. And you, like, really, truly enjoyed it. And then just one day, a villager found you, and they ended up burning you at the stake just because they didn't understand. Like, they just saw that it was witchcraft, but they didn't understand that... You were just living in harmony with nature. And so this is being held in your throat because you weren't able to speak your truth. And then it's also like the witch's wound that they're healing for you today. It's 
So Archangel Michael is just shining his beautiful, powerful golden light onto the scene, onto your throat chakra. Just releasing this for you today. This is also, I feel like there's another past life here too that's actually pretty intense. It's like I'm seeing um in Lyra during the reptilian wars you were strangled to death by a reptilian and it's almost like i could feel like those hands around my neck they're saying that this war was very traumatic for you because you loved lyra and you were in lyra when it happened <clears throat> And you definitely, it, I'm feeling like some trust issues, like deep trust issues where you don't even understand where it comes from. And it's because during the Lyran Wars, the Draconians came to Lyra and they were offering technology to help advance Lyra. And the Lyran royalty actually tried to live with the draconian royalty <laughs> like they ended up um trying to coexist for as long as they could when the draconians first came to lyra and so a lot of lyran royalty was actually not sold but some of them were forced to, to live with the draconians or married off to the draconians or the reptilians and so you actually get a lot of Lyrans, a lot of Lion royalty that knows how to speak like reptilian light language and things like that because they did have to coexist for an amount of time before the Draconian War, before the Draconians just decided to completely destroy Lyra and Vega. And... So I'm just saying that like this was very traumatic for you because this was your home and you loved Lyra and you were Lyran royalty for a very long time. And I'm showing like one of the reptilians that strangled you in this lifetime or in the lifetime that they're showing me. And so Archangel Michael is just shining his beautiful light onto your body before this even happens, just taking your soul out of the body before it even happened. Just saying it's okay to release this, it's okay to trust again. Just shining more healing light into your throat. Oh, I felt your throat chakra open so much. I think that was like something very deep that you're holding on to. Yeah, I think their biggest message is just like it's okay to trust again. Ooh, that feels a lot better. I think that was being held in your energy field too. Because your energy field even feels like way lighter. That's interesting. They're saying that a BQH session might be a good idea for you. Um, like a full BQH session. Just so that you can get this information yourself. And there's uh, things that you have to actually feel yourself. So it can be completely released from your energy field. But that feels so much better. Ooh. I'm seeing if, um, okay, <laughs> never mind. We're going to go to the heart chakra and then they'll start filling you in a little bit more. So let's see if there's anything else at the throat. No, that feels pretty good. That feels so much better. Okay, let's go down into the heart chakra. So let's see what the divine blueprint of your heart is. <laughs> That was so cool. It was like instantly just like math and sacred geometry everywhere. <laughs> it felt like I was almost in the matrix and I just saw like numbers and sacred geometry everywhere. That's so cool. They said that you can alchemize through numbers. So really pay attention to numerology, the frequency the numbers carry. <laughs> That's funny, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie carries numbers. I don't know, I just heard that. That's funny. <laughs> they like to joke sometimes. 
Yeah, they're saying that, um, I heard that you have a very large, like, internal, <laughs> um, database, um, it's almost like a number bank, and when you're doing, like, science and math, it's not even a clear cognizance, it's like, a it's already stored within your soul blueprint, so it's like, it's, like, it's a clear cognizance, but it's not coming from the quantum field. It's coming from, like, the knowledge of your own soul. Like, your own internal database, <laughs> if that makes sense. Where you just have all this information naturally stored within your DNA. You just understand that mathematics is, like, this universal language that can explain physicality and spirituality. Like, you're here to help us mix both of those together and help remind us that mathematics is not separate from spirituality. That it can all be explained and intertwined together. Ooh, they're saying that there's also a power that you can put behind numbers. So, understanding things like gematria, but then using it in your own life. So understanding like the number 13, how it's actually a power number, like choosing to do things on the day of the 13th for your own power, for your own benefit, like studying the frequencies of numbers and then using it and implementing it in your own life for your own benefit is extremely powerful for you. Your soul just naturally harnesses the frequency of numbers. So they're saying that when you see angel numbers, it's even, it's more powerful for you than most people. Just because you're very attached or this is just the type of frequency that you're most attuned to. So that really does count as like an amplification for you. So when you see angel numbers from your guides, it's not even like a message. It's like they're sending you actual frequency to amplify something in your life. Like they're sending you the frequency of strength or the frequency of rebirth or the frequency of transition, the frequency of new beginnings and I think that that's something that has been actually, like, important to you lately. But other than that, there's just a lot of love. There, um, your Lyran family is just saying that you've done such a beautiful job recently. They're so proud of you. They're so excited for your journey and where you're at. And to just continue on the path. They're just shining green light into your heart, just clearing any distortions around past relationships, just reminding you that self-love is the most important love. <laughs> I'm just asking them to send you so much love while you're listening to this. You have so many around you. It's amazing. It's so cool. Okay, um, I'm just going to tune you for financial abundance. Everything else in your heart looks really good. It's funny because I can tell <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of these activations for the women and Liberate the High Priestess. And I can always tell who did all my activations <laughs> because your blueprint actually looks really good. So um, let me just tune you for financial abundance. Uh, dia, dia. Okay, let's open the master coding in the solar plexus. <laughs> I got a picture of Sekhmet and the Lyrans. They harness the energy of the sun and power. And that you can tap into this. Your solar plexus is so powerful. They're saying that for you to really harness this power, start doing a lot of qigong. Because your qigong, your sacral and your solar plexus are extremely powerful. And so if you 
start doing qigong it's going to activate your sacral energy but it's going to put that power of your solar plexus behind it i'm seeing you as like a lion being doing qigong (laughs) it's the spiritual warrior energy Uh, you have so much of it i love it and i think that's why it was so important to connect your solar plexus with your throat chakra you actually don't collect your solar plexus looks so good it's meant to to be your superpower you're meant to be powerful in this life that's why you've gone to extremes with addiction so that you can come back to who you truly are as a soul level and your soul is so powerful and strong i love it it's just really learning to like it's literally just stripping all of your conditioning away and coming back to self. Like, that's what they're saying. They're saying that you're doing such a beautiful job coming back to who you truly are. And it's just stripping away that conditioning, like one belief at a time, just to come back to who you really are. And it's like, when you need to feel powerful, just connect to the Lyrans to your lyran family because they're always there behind you and supporting you and then they're saying for you to get um to get emotions out of your body roar (laughs) we kind of already talked about that but like screaming and doing things like ecstatic dance like things to make you feel powerful to just like get that shit out of your body and be done with it kickboxing just anything to get you into your power having that power practice every single day it's like i'm seeing that once you are really in your power you're just radiating this beautiful golden light you're like your force field is so strong that's what they're calling it like they're not even calling it like your energy field they're calling it your force field that you just radiate outwards like nothing can hurt you and that you're so divinely protected by the lions the lyrans so i'm asking them if anything here needs to be upgraded they are just shining their shine is pure golden light into your solar plexus it's so powerful it's beautiful like it feels like my or my eyes are closed in the void and it just feels like it's bright in the void (laughs) like the lights are turned on in the void because your solar plexus radiates so much light they're also showing me it's like you're in this beautiful like giving receiving relationship with the sun so being in sunlight is very important for you because you are transmuting energy through the sun through your solar plexus so it's like you're absorbing sunlight into your solar plexus and then you're giving it back into the sun it's almost like it's almost like you're cleansing the energies around you and the energies of other people that's really cool actually okay and they're saying so okay so you can naturally cleanse energy very easily so you can cleanse your own energy you can cleanse other people's energy they're saying you can cleanse entire environments and so if you do a lot of qigong it's like charging the battery right so it's like you're gonna put all of your sexual energy and your healing energy behind a just cleansing environments and cleansing your own energy field and cleansing the energy field of other people around you. Oh, and then you can also use crystals to amplify this as well. They said that you came here because you really wanted to ground this Lyran frequency to the earth. And then you just wanted to help like clear and cleanse this energy okay so let's go down into or your solar plexus looks really good um there's not really much that i can do here because like i said it's meant to be your superpower so let's go down into your sacral so when i open the master coding of your sacral (laughs) 
I just saw like a snake immediately, like that divine serpent. You have a lot of energy here. And it just, it's like it wants to be released. Like it just wants to be let out. And it's like, ooh, they said another Kundalini awakening is coming. <laughs> I don't know if you've had one before. Maybe you've just felt it a little bit, but they said that it's about to get more intense for you. Like I can feel all of the energy here that just like needs to be released. They are shining orange light into it. Just help moving this energy around. <sighs> Let's just activate this completely. I also feel like a lot of like nurturing energy here. It's beautiful. Uh, the idea. There's another guide here. Harmonia. She's a Greek goddess. She's like the Greek goddess of just like peace and harmony. Like you're really here to just like cleanse your environments, cleanse, cleanse the energy, ground the lyre and frequency, and just bring peace to this planet. Like peace and harmony. And she said that Harmonia has been guiding you your entire life and to really set the intention of connecting with her. So they're showing me that your main guides right now are Harmonia and the Lions. That's such a beautiful mix. Like, because Harmonia feels very peaceful and she's like, this power and grace and femininity and then you have your lyrans that are powerful and strong and supportive and protective it's such a beautiful mix there are definitely beautiful guides to have behind you supporting you she said the harmonias definitely represents your sacral energy like it's just peaceful and calm but powerful. And then I heard the word justice. Like just doing what is right in the world. Just being that beautiful beacon of light for everyone around you. Okay, let's go down into your root. Uh, I saw a lot of nature, a lot of nature. I feel distortion here. I felt distortion immediately. I'm asking your guides what the distortion is. There's some kind of distortion here around abandonment and childhood. So I would just go into meditation or you could even channel right and just ask yourself exactly what this is from but it does feel pretty intense. They said it's just understanding that there was always a greater plan in place for you. That this was one of the experiences that you wanted to have. They're shining red light into it, just trying to cleanse and clear this. Just saying it's okay to release this, let this go. <laughs> They're saying connect to your inner child more. Like, just watch movies and shows that make your inner child happy. They said to watch WandaVision. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if you like superheroes or not, but they're saying to watch WandaVision. It's almost like, so she sees her life as a sitcom, and it's almost like that's how your inner child sees life, is as a sitcom. And then there's messages in there about how we create our reality. That is important to like your next part of the journey. But they're just saying you have a, you're very connected to earth. Your nature is very important for you. 
you can speak to the plants, the trees. When you were in Vega, it's like you had your own gardens <laughs> where you would just speak to your plant friends and flowers all day long and you're just so happy and peaceful. You just want to bring that same energy of love and peace here. So let me see. Okay, so we are going to completely activate. So you have a chakra it, between your knees, between your ankles, and then a chakra right below that. And I'm going to activate all of those for you because your root does feel a little closed to still. And this is really going to help push and flow that energy up through you to really clear your channel completely. Oh, Ooh, that feels a lot better. Now let's see if we can just get that energy completely flowing up and in. Oh, that feels really good feels so much better i love it okay so let me see if they have any final messages for you today they're just saying that they're excited for the next part of your journey the word alchemy has came up a few times during the session so let me just ask them why alchemy is important for you Ooh, they said that you've been an alchemist in many, many lifetimes. And this is part of your love for science. So it's like I'm seeing you as a high priestess, but then I'm also seeing you like, um, like deep into alchemy <laughs> in the past. So actually like working with the elements and working with metals. And using, using the alchemy of metals to enhance life. I heard the word immortality. It's like you were working with metals to try and promote or bring immortality to earth. I'm asking them why is it important for you to know that. They said it's almost like you're a master alchemist. So um, although you're not really alchemizing in the same way now, um, you can be very good at emotional alchemy. So really studying the vibrations of your body and then transmuting those emotions immediately to tune yourself to the timelines that you want to experience. So they're saying rewatch the Hathor week, the manifestation week of Liberate the High Priestess because this is something that you can truly master and that you've mastered in the past and that you love alchemy. Like, <clears throat> it's cool. I can feel like the passion <laughs> that you have for alchemy. And it's like, you just understand that, that anything can be transmuted because we're all the same. We're all made of the same energy. So you naturally, oh, I think this is part of your divine blueprint as like cleansing and clearing energy because you're really just transmuting that energy into something else. So you just have this like, this natural ability to alchemicalize your environment. You're a natural alchemist. I love it. It's so cool. Okay, so they're saying that that is a lot of information for you today. 
but they love you so much. Like, I feel their love behind me. They're saying it's time to be courageous and brave as you step into the next part of your journey. That you're so much more powerful than you could ever imagine. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love the Lyran so much. <laughs> and then they're just thanking me as well. So if you have any questions at all about this session, we can talk more about it. All right, well, I would love to thank Carrie's beautiful Lyran family, the Lyran Council for being here with us today. And I would like to thank Harmonia. Thank you so much. <laughs>